Hello everyone, you are welcome to Card Bond and my name is Ola. I would like to welcome you to this brand new project which I have designed. The purpose of this is to assist you in improving your grasp of the Fusion 360 software in the context of a completed project. And as obviously already known from the thumbnail, the topic of this is a ship wheel. So, who is this tailored towards? This is designed for both beginner and what I should call elementary level users. Having said that, it is particularly to assist students and beginner professionals get better acquainted with the Fusion 362. The approach employed in this project would entail us creating our part files and bringing them all together to create the assembled product. However, to avoid you overworking yourself, in trying to watch a 2 hour long video, I've divided this into 14 videos to culminate this series. Explicitly, 9 videos for the part models and 5 videos to deal with the assembly process. And at the end of our assembly, this is what we are going to have as displayed on your screen. One thing I decided to add to this project is to try to carry along everyone with the thought process I have through explanations. And for this, I created scribbles that show how the design workflow is determined from the drawing in dimensions and general ideas as best as I could. Although that is a motive, I expect that most of us would have our own original ideas on what workflow to follow, and that is perfectly fine. My method would by no means be the best, and there would always be different approaches when it comes to design. Having said that, you are admonished to use other methods as we go along because it allows you to grow and build a methodology for yourself. Alright, at this point, there should be a card popping up at the top right corner of your screen, which will link you to a web page where you can download the PDF file used in this project. Finally, I would like to give a friendly reminder <laughs> that you can subscribe to this channel and click on the notification bell. The purpose of this is so you get notified when new uploads are made and you can even go a bit further to assist your colleagues by sharing them links to these videos and the purpose of this is first of all to help them and also to help this channel in growing and thankfully <laughs> all of that is free now without more to say except that i know you would enjoy this project so let's proceed into our design videos all right guys so at this point i'm guessing that you have downloaded the pdf and then we begin creating our components with your software open we begin from the page 4 of our PDF um, because here we have on page 3 um, what we see of the components together which I have created to us um, combined assembly. However, we start from page 4 where we begin to create and model our wheel handle. Alright, so it's, the structure looks very simple yet it's the procedure that I've chosen to follow is a little bit weird. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're just going to use that procedure. So what we're going to be doing right now is I move over to this point on my software to create a new sketch. I usually prefer to begin using the top plane, so I'll select on this plane. At first, we're going to be creating a bunch of um, construction lines or guidelines to enable us to um, adequately create what we intend to have. So I'll start from the origin point and let me select on construction here. I'll click on control and my scroller to pan around my screen for those who are complete beginners. I will just draw a construction line this way for my sake. Um, then I would say I switch off the construction for a while. I would draw a line. Um, or let's say I draw two lines this way. I'm not so sure of the dimensions right now. 
um then i would okay let's say i'll just dimension the distance between these two to be according to our drawing we have it as 40. so our um construction and everything we are doing is in millimeters but um i guess millimeters is small and but we'll stick to it and let me say for complete beginners if you somehow do not already have your unit configured um if you're using fusion 360 like me what you need to do is go over here document settings here yeah, millimeters you select on this and change your dimension unit here so for me i retain my millimeters we have 40 here but we want it to be let's say symmetrical to this construction line so I go to constraints which we are going to be using a lot of times i select on the first one the second and then this line Alright, so what we'll do next is going to be to create a circle at this point. So the circle we are going to be creating is going to be, let's bring it downwards a little bit of radius 17. So I would say 17 multiplied by 2. That's to give us the diameter of the circle. And I would say enter. At this point, um, the circle is not fully defined. So what we'll do is we we'll go back to constraint and we we'll use um, coincident. Uh, let me know it's coincident. I'm not sure how it's going to react. So I use line, um, construction line again. I join these two points together, and I would say tangent. So this line, construction line, and this. Our next step is going to be to dimension the entire line here. Um, but before that, I'll place equal to constraint. So the equal to constraint allows it so that um, whatever dimension is applied to this line affects the line below also. So they're going to be equal to each other at all points in time. Um, dimension and our overall dimension as we have is 490. So I'll say this is 490. Yeah, so that's how we want it. I'll just drag this construction line backwards a little bit. And then our next thing would be I would create, uh, let's say, an offset of this line, the construction line we created here. And then this offset will bring it towards the center of um there's a hole we have there so i'm going to like offset it by that distance to 156 so here i'll say minus 156 156 millimeters and say okay and then um let's see then our last thing to do is going to be something i would say it's weird but um we're going to do it so i just create my construction line again do something like this I've done that one and I'll do it again at the other side apply the symmetry constraint again one and two and then I select this line then I would place a dimension between these two let's just say we make this to be 80 it is not bad all right so at 80 the next thing I'll create a line select on this from this point i join it to the top of this circle and yeah so i would mirror this line across this so that's that um i don't know why for now this seems to be oh, okay so i understand it right now so what we're going to do is for this line construction line i'll click on fix and select this construction line here so now all of our sketches are fully defined the last thing to do would be to close this up behind here it looks a little bit weird what we're doing right now but um i assure you that um there is a reason for doing this then i'll click on this construction line again and close it up here all right so at this point i would say finish sketch and this is what we have it looks weird um but we're getting somewhere so what we'll do is i'm going to extrude this um by 40 
if you notice what we have at this point of the drawing it tells us that the thickness also is 40 millimeters so i would select on this part of this drawing and say um, one side no so i make it to be symmetric and the whole length i'll select the whole length to be 40 millimeters and so we have something like this so say okay i go back to my sketch make it visible and then for this part what we'll do is that um okay i guess we have to go back in here so let's click on sketch and say edit sketch there's something left which i eliminated so i would change my construction line which i created here having done this i would also create a line here so the purpose of this is kind of weird but um as i said previously i think i said that already that um the procedures i'm using might be different from what you decide to use so we'll create a line here to close this or cut this also and back to this view we go to revolve and i select on just this quarter my axis of rotation is going to be this and then we have this here with us all right so at this point i'm supposing that you can guess what we want to do next which is going to be two lofts between these two shapes so i would say go over to create search down we have loft and then i would select on this let's see not here this face and the other profile which is going to be this face here so with these two selected i would say okay all right it looks super weird to be honest with you um but this is what we want so at this point we go over to the next step and for this we're going to create a construction plane so i would select a um, plane between two edges i'll select on this first edge rotate and select on the edge below here so we have a plane that goes or cuts through in this manner i say okay The next thing we go over to create sketch we select on this sketch on that plane move it this way and for my purpose um, i would change my display setting because i don't want it to be um this way so i'll just say wireframe uh, can't really see it so wireframe with visible edges <laughs> it looks super weird um but that's fine so um what we do here we create a bunch of construction lines again so from let's see this point i'll make this sketch visible so we can use this for um for reference sake so um at this point what we do is okay this is visible i go to create and i go to intersect right so I guess I need to see my stuff for this. I'll select on these faces. Um, I'll just select on all of the faces to be honest. So I'm not really sure which one should work. So I'll say okay. Yep. So I could make this um, stuff to go back to wireframe with visible edges only. So plain. Is that what it is? No. I'll finish the sketch. Go back into the sketch. Edit sketch. So at this point, I create my construction line. What I just did right now because I didn't know how to get back to the normal um, view. So I finished the sketch and went back to edit sketch. We brought me back here by default. So I go to construction. I would begin from let's say we create a line here i begin a line from the center where we have this triangle showing so it snaps to the center of this um, of that line we just created Oof. 
This is super weird. Um, I draw it this way. Check. Okay, yeah. So I would create a line coming this way from somewhere around here and say the line is this long it should be a construction line make the bodies invisible make this a construction line and another here let's see i draw another one towards the front this way bear in mind that they do not have dimensions yet so um for now i'm simply just um drawing the lines to be dimensionless select select filters uh, profiles and it is uncheck profiles so that i can select this line itself all right so we have this we have this line oh man this line good construction line and so we have one we have two yep and then we also create um, one here this way it's a construction line let's make it this way check mark and lastly we create the last one somewhere here construction line this way so we make dimensions the distance between these two is going to be um, let's move this this way it's gonna be 16.8 um, then the distance between these two is gonna be let's make this 19.2 and then lastly we have what we have here the last one will make this 19 okay this is not lastly <laughs> make this 19.5 i guess yeah 19.5 millimeters and then penultimately we make this one um 38.1 d'accord so that's good with all of this done our next thing now is just going to be to create some um profiles so i'll click on switch off the construction i will draw I draw my circle on this line the same di um, diameter we used before 34 and I would um, let's say draw a line here it seems to me like I'm seeing new things I didn't see before <laughs> construction line with these two I'm sorry tangents um, this is good and then we would draw some circles so the first circle we're going to do is just going to be something like this it's not going to be a construction so it's, we just draw something this way first of all uh, we skip over to this side um, i would switch on my bodies to know where exactly i'm supposed to draw this particular one so i want to draw it after this sharp edge um, going inwards a little bit so it to be somewhere around here so I would um, say this is back to wireframe with this um, it's just weird because design can be so frustrating sometimes so I'll draw something this way alright so with that done there I'll repeat another circle around here I'm going to try not to make the circles to align with the ones that we've done previously so I'm just going to do them at random something like this and lastly I will draw a circle going this way all right so with all this I would deactivate the bodies and then begin to apply constraints so first of all I would like this circle to be tangential to this right and at the same time I would like it to be tangential to this line we have here so this and this all right while also ensuring that the circle goes through this point here so for that i would say i didn't see this coming 
<laughs> but I would have to do this. I draw a line this way. I'm going this way, not a construction line. Right? Or dimension this line. I'm drawing it after um, this sharp edge that we have here. Um, where is it? After this sharp edge, so we have the construction line here. So, not a construction line, sorry. So, I'll dimension this to be 71 according to what we have on our drawing. Yes, and uh, alright, this is super weird. I'll draw another line from the center of this line here. I'll take it upwards. It's good. This is going to be a construction line now. <laughs> so I'm drawing this line from the center of the line we just created. And so I would say the dimension or distance between these two. If I do that, I make this to be vertical. And the distance between this line here and then this line here is going to be 156. D'accord? Alright, so this is perfect. So at this point, what we we'll do is I want this circle to touch this point. So I would use coincident. And let's see this and uh, this. Yeah, so this is what we have. It looks super weird, <laughs> but trust me, this is what we want to have. At the end of the day, I would create a dimension between these two lines, this construction line and this one created here. Everything is becoming a little bit complicated, but that's just because the project or the handle is a little bit complicated. So I'll make this um, 20. So that's perfect. So we go over to the next side of our circles and whatnot. So this is going to be similar to what we just did. So I would make these two, first of all, to be coincident, right? Then, um, let's see, let's see, to be sure of what I'm doing. We have this small construction line we created as 19.2. It's obviously at the wrong point, so I'll just select on one of these points here. Um, let's see. And drag it. Can it be dragged? Alright, so what I'll do is I'll do this here. Let's make this something like 100, so it's massive enough to do what we need to do. Alright, so we've extended it this way, and then we say tangent. We want this circle to be tangential to this. All right, and um, let's see, and also this circle tangential to this. D'accord. D'accord means okay in French. <laughs> and lastly, we do the same thing here. So what we want at this point is going to be this is tangential to this. All right, this. Is tangential to this 19.5 um, circle line we have so we don't actually have to bring it towards this direction we just have to select the both of them and then it does it and um, lastly we have remember we still have this um, construction line created here um, which is at what distance so the 38.1 millimeter distance so what we want to do is that this circle here now is tangential to this construction line this way all right so we have this in particular at the end of the day our next thing to do is gonna be to create a distance so we create a construction line afresh this way and we just draw it somewhere here i'll make this construction line 20 in size don't worry it feels a little bit weird but <laughs> so that's 20 and our last thing to do will be to um 
first of all, I'll create a dimension, which is très important, very important. I'll create a dimension from this point here. Remember this line we created, the 71 millimeters. Create a dimension from this point up to this the 20 millimeters um, construction line we just created and then the distance between both of them is going to be 260 according to the drawing so it's really complicated to be honest with you I never expected it <laughs> and then lastly we create um, the tangent sorry a tangent coincidence between these two the circle and this point so with that done what we do is uh, create a dimension for this massive um, circle we have here so I'd, um, sorry um, so I'll just say something like this so let's make this somewhere around 50 and let's see how this works for us all right so that 50 it is within this part so it's supposed to be before this um, 260 dimension here so 50 looks good uh, yeah so we change this to 70 or before we do that we make this circle equal to this circle right and then we change this to 70 or 60 I think 60 is not so bad um all right all right all right should we make it 70 90 let's see what that does for us all right so 90 is good also so this is what we have it looks super weird um but this is how it should be so i'll go over to line and i would pick from this point here so i'll draw a line that way i take it upwards sorry shouldn't be a construction line um, take it upwards yeah and then I draw a line also this way and let's see here and make it cut into this circle we have here alright so the reason what I just did this is now just to have a kind of um, a profile here is a little bit weird to be honest with you um, but depending on what I've seen so far this is what we want to have um, this line actually doesn't have to cut as I'm looking at it right now so with all of this done the dimension of this line is also not important um, so let's just let's just make it 460 it's actually not important and the height is also massively not important so but we'll just make it 125 so at this point I go to finish sketch I make my body visible in this view or rotated then I go to revolve so you need to pay attention to what I'm going to be selecting right now so with this I'm going to select um, a couple of um, structures or I don't know if I should call it structures so I select on this profile I select on this profile I don't need these extra ones here um, then I select on this I select on everything within here and I select on this circle so with all of this selected um, what we have is something like this you should also have this and the axis will be the center axis we have here and instead of create we use cut so objects to cut just just one object so we simply say okay and then we have something that looks good and nice like this so we notice that now it looks very much um, similar to um, the figure or the shape that we have it took a long process to get to this point but i mean if you take a look at it from the side or let's say this view it looks just like what we have if you take a look at it from the front 
it looks just like what we have and from the top so the thing the it's kind of tricky but it's required us to have um like i would say full understanding of um how to manipulate what we're doing to achieve this particular structure so we have just um, two more things to do and they are the i would say they are the simplest parts of this a few things to do so we notice at the base of this we have um a radius a fillet so what we do is we just go over to fillet and it's i do not suppose it is everywhere yeah so it's not all true it's not roundabout because on the top view we do not see it so what we just do is we select one and two we change the radius it is radius right yeah radius of eight make it this way huh it looks large <laughs> Um, but that's fine and then we say okay our next thing will be to go to create sketch we come over to this um we place a sketch at the center so we place a circle here the circle is of diameter 6.5 so we place 6.5 and the distance with this edge for this circle is 22 that's super weird 22 which means there's something missing so we're going to be able to check back on our dimensions to see that okay um, probably a mistake we made can be rectified so i would say finish sketch and i would for this one extrude this circle it's going to be an extrusion cut all true okay and i select on sketch again this top plane and i'll draw a circle somewhere here let's just say somewhere here and then the diameter of this is 10. right um, i make this sketch visible and the distance between this line here we have a construction line here and the center of this is um, 156 156 let's say enter all right so with that finish sketch and extrude again asymmetric view select on this and we drag it all the way down because it goes all through as seen with these hidden lines here and cut it all right, so with all this done, I guess what we just have to do is to cross check why this looks very small as compared to what um, I think we should have. Um, this is 22, but it looks really minute and it's very close to this curve here. I'm not so sure why it is this way, but um, you know what? I guess what we're going to do is we just check to inspect the distance between this point here and this point here so it is 278 so obviously there's a mistake it should be 260 so what we do is we go back to let's see let's see so that's 260 from this point to this point we have 47.79 I guess the problem is going to be the, the um, what's it called the diameter of the circles that we chose so what we can do is simply to come back um, let's see here is it I don't know where it is now do on so sketch 5 um, okay that's that so it's definitely sketch 3 so edit sketch 3 or our second sketch and um, we have a little bit of weird stuff going on here so this is 71 and this is the reason why we're having this problem right now is because the dimension is actually not given for these um, circles but if it were to be given then we definitely will not be having this problem we're having right now um so i guess we just make this i don't know 
um, smaller rather than larger instead of 90 let's make it 40 it's going to change what we have drastically um, but it should still be good finish sketch <laughs> Control Z. Alright, so if we change that to 40, we have to reduce this to say 420. Um, is it? No. So let's make this. Uh, oh, you know what? I'll just remove this dimension. All we need is for it to cross this circle here somewhere after our point 360 um the best thing i guess we can do is just to make these two tangential to each other so irrespective of how we change this 40 millimeters this is always going to be there all right so placing the tangential constraint and we have changed this to 40 our next thing to do is just to create a line a random line to be honest to just go upwards in this direction the purpose is we want to create a margin or a separation between this space here and the space here um, and then when we finish the sketch it gets all messed up obviously so all we can do is delete the previous revolve and we apply it afresh to save ourselves the stress of weird selection processes um, that's number one um, I would say this should be number two. We will then select this point or this space here. We select this. We select this circle. Right? We select this circle. So, what we have now has been adjusted and it looks like this. So, the axis of revolution is a center line here. Notice what we have. It looks. Um, far more similar to what we should have so i can this invisible now and then we have this which means um taking a look at it from the front um the space here is more um the curve here is lesser than it was previously and then everything is done to perfection all right so at the end of this since we are done the next thing for us to do is to save our part file um so i'll see you in the next part this is ola from card pond and you're welcome again to this series for the project ship wheel um in this um video or in particular part we're going to be modeling the arc of our ship wheel project and this um, can be found on the page 5 of 18 in our pdf file which we downloaded in the previous um, videos all right so let's get into this all right all right all right so this part is going to be modeled in a kind of strange way for if we simply follow the drawing on the page 5 then we're going to have some disturbance or difficulty when we get into the assembly phase so let's just jump right into creating our file so we click on create sketch and for this we we'll select on this plane here so i'll draw your attention back to the page 3 title to the documentation on this page you can find that the overall length looking at section aa of the wheel is 1110 and putting that in mind if we take a look at the next page where we have our handle the overall length of the handle is 490 do a little bit of arithmetic here we have 1110 minus 490 and 490 again sorry so that's for the two handles we have um, let's see 130 so we have a gap of 130 in between here 
which means um, that gap must actually be sustained. And if we take a look at, we can cross check that using uh, the page six on our drawing. We have the distance here as 65 and 65 in two places will give us 130. So yes, that's fine. However, if we use directly the drawing dimensions placed on page five, we would have a lot of complications when we get into our assembly phase. And I'll explain it in a short while. All right. Taking a look again on page three. On the front view of the wheel, we notice that the distance between each handle is 45 degrees, right? And on the next page, or sorry, on the handle page, we have the angle of this arc as 45 degrees. But if we are to place the arc into this um, assembly as seen on page three, um, that will mean that there will be an interference around here and here because the arc would extend towards this side which means it doesn't work. So um, we're going to do a little bit of modification on this and um, I gotta assure you that it's going to be easy. First of all, we'll create the drawing the way it looks on page five. So we begin. We've selected our drawing plane. Um, I'll pick a circle and make it here, center diameter. I begin drawing from the center point and just draw a circle this way. So we notice that the radius of that surface for the arc, this surface here, is 370. However, I would like to draw a line um, from the center of the hole situated here. Based on my calculation, the line is going to be about, um, since it's at the center, that's 370 plus half of 60 here, that should give us 400. However, we would not be using that dimension, but we'll take our dimension from the handle. So what we'll be doing here is that we understand that the distance, um, the overall distance is 1,110. 1, so we'd say half of 1,110 will give us 555. And then, so that's 555 five, five minus 156. It gives us 399 as opposed to 400 if we use the dimensions obtained from um, the drawing for the arc. So our diameter for this is going to be 399 multiplied by 2. And so we have um, this drawing. Next, we are going to create lines using the construction function. And we'll draw a line coming downwards and another one at an angle. So the angle is going to be 45 degrees. So we'll place a dimension between these two. So now we have 45 degrees here. The next thing for us to do will be to cut this line because we only need the part here. So we go over to trim and trim this out. Um, this is negligible and we have what we have here on the screen. With this, we come back to the page um, three and we are going to create or signify that there's going to be the handle here. So what we'll do for that is that we'll just create offsets. We know that the handle thickness as seen on page four is 40. Hence, we know that half of the angle is 20. So we'd offset this by 20 in this direction. So we say minus 20. Then we also create an offset for this in this direction, which is 20. What does that mean? So that means that this line is going to signify the half or the surface of the handle and the surface of the handle at this point. Hence, our part is going to only be between this point and this point. All right. So now we're done with this particular part of this component and I'll click on finish sketch. The next thing for us to do is to create a new sketch. So I'll create a new sketch using this plane. That is our default plane there. And 
we would go ahead to create a projection of this line we drew here so this projects this line towards our current plane i'll make it a construction line um, the projection line should be a construction line and i'll say okay now we have our construction line here i can go ahead to switch off this and all we have is this line here all right go back to the front view and we proceed to create the profile on our page 5. I begin by drawing a rectangle using the center rectangle function. If you take a look at sketch, um, I'm going to start drawing from this point which stands as the end point for this arc. So I go to front view, I pick from here, draw this way, uncheck construction and place our dimensions it's supposed to be 40 at the base click on tab and 60 for the height all right so this is our profile in itself then we go ahead to add the extra features that we need for this i would create first of all construction lines which i love to use <laughs> i'll create a construction line this way and i think that's enough I switch up the construction still using the line function I draw a line coming downwards this way and say ok and draw another going sideways this way and say ok the thing is that you might have a different method to do this but this is how it works in my head so I place dimensions um, we know that the distance is 30 hence the distance from here to here would be 15 but that's weird and the distance from here to here would be 50 divided by 2 which is 25 all right next if you take a look at detail a we have some fillets or curves so we're going to create those curves here as i've said previously i prefer to create all my um, features I do as much as possible that can be done in the sketches so I have few features down here all right so I would say we create a circle here based on detail a the diameter is 5 that's radius 2.5 multiplied by 2 I draw another circle here try not to make your origin point for the circle to touch anything yet so it's just going to be a simple circle and I will do the same thing 5 alright now we place some constraints we need this to be tangential to this line and also this to be tangential to this line we apply the same for this circle this tangential to this line and um, escape I drag it out a little bit let's see that's yeah and then constraint again this tangential to this line so by all means make sure that it's tangential in this way and then our next thing to do is just simply going to be to mirror these features to the other sides all right so we'll go to mirror i select on my circle this line um this circle the mirror line is the construction line we created earlier on which is this and say ok then we mirror again to the bottom part so that's this line um, then I select on the circles 1, 2, 3, 4 holding my control and mirror the mirror line is the new construction line we created here and say ok you could go ahead to delete um, or cut some parts out but it's absolutely not necessary all right so next we say finish sketch we go over to this view and we have something like this so now we go to create and click on sweep so what we're going to be doing right now is to select the profiles which is profile here we select the profiles to sweep so we begin by selecting all these profiles carefully yep 
appear appear up this one two three four five and six so in total what we have is selected um, 17 selected profiles and when you're done selecting yours it should look like this it should look this way all right um, and then the path to sweep across go back to this view and I'll select on this part we have to make sure we select perpendicular for if you select um, the other option parallel it doesn't give you what you want so perpendicular and we say okay all right now that we have done this our next step is going to be to create the holes that we see in our drawing file as you can see a cutout around here so what we do is we create holes on this face and this face however since um, based on this we understand that the part we are using is actually going to begin from this line like I said before and extend into this line so that means um, and the distance between these two lines is um, 20 same as this so our hole is going to be more than 20 millimeters so it's going to go deeper um, because we need it to be 20 millimeters from this point I mean, it's 20 millimeters going in 20 millimeters coming in so what we do is we create our hole here and then say 20 plus 20 that's 40 and 40 here also all right so i would begin by creating a sketch this way and create a circle at the center of this face you do not need to bother about getting the center accurately because we'll place our dimensions and the diameter of this circle is 10 so we place dimension between this line and this to be 30 okay and then between this line and this to be 20 and say okay all right so with that we can say finish sketch i would repeat the process for this other face create sketch here draw a circle 10 and then place dimensions between this and this to be 30 yeah and this with this to be 20 okay now with this done we finish our sketch and we have those two sketches here and here our next step is going to be to create our cut apply here and it goes backwards like i explained by 40 so we say minus 40 all right and also create our cut here extrude with this profile and it also goes inward by 40 so we say minus 40 so we say okay now we have this and we have it here all right all right all right now it's time for us to utilize this sketch here and this one so to do that we go over to construct we create a plane at an angle we select this line as the reference for the plane now you notice that the plane cuts across it this way right so we say okay we repeat the same process plane at an angle and select on this plane and say okay so what we're going to do next which is our last step I can switch this off drop this and we are going to be cutting this profile or this body using these two planes we go about to split body the body to split is this the splitting tools we select the first plane and the second plane so we are splitting the body at those points and we say okay all right so at this point we could hide the construction lines now we notice under bodies that we have three bodies here that's the first the second and the third so what we do is we click on the two extremes we say remove right click and remove right click and remove and we have just this one left so now if we go over to inspect 
and we check the angle between this line and this line we observe that it is still 45 degrees however the distance has changed and is shorter than what it could have been if we did not apply this cut so even though at this point also we could still have the distance between these two lines to be 45 this is also 45 but then the length is reduced taking into consideration the thickness of the handles that we have all right so with this we can go ahead to save our part and i'll meet you in the next video where we model our holder this is ola from card pond and you're welcome to the third in the series of this project which is our ship wheel and in this we are going to be creating the part called the holder as seen on our pdf i guess we just jump right into it <laughs> Alright, so the first thing for us to do is to go over to our create sketch as usual. Um, for this, I guess I will just create this plane um, because it seems like the part is facing this direction. So this is très facile in French. This is very simple to do. I begin by clicking on my circle. So we start by creating a circle and if we look at our drawing properly we have a dimension radius 106 seen at the bottom right corner so our diameter here is going to be 106 multiplied by 2 and then we have this massive 212 uh, millimeter so it's pretty much almost done <laughs> we draw or create um, a construction line that goes upwards from the center point this way um, create a line that comes um, sideways this way then we create two more lines or uh, yeah let's just create two lines that come downwards this way okay so we still have circles here so what we do is we place some dimensions so the distance between this circle as seen on our drawing and this line it seems to be 65 so we make this 65 and um, the gap between these two lines as seen on the drawing it is located on the left on the right side here it is seen to be 40 so we say 40 um, so we place some constraints we say this should be symmetry this line this line with this all right then we can drag this downwards very very weird with the way i do my things so we have this all right okay you know what let's just create a dimension for this line and call this 80. i guess it simplifies what we do next so make these two equal to each other and then for this we are just going to cut one, two, three. So we have this here. All right, all right, all right. Make these two coincident. So we have something like this. Lastly, we click on circle and we create a circle here. As you can see, that it has a radius of eight. So we make this to be 16 and i would say tangent is tangential to this line and also so i'll move it upward first because if i just create the tangent there it could place the circle downwards here which is a weird thing it does but so you move it upward a little bit and then place your other constraint between these two and then the next thing for us to do is just to mirror this circle to the other side here and then we say mirror line is this line okay voila we could end the sketch this way but it's going to create more features for us like i said in the previous video so what we'll be doing right now is we select on one two three 
4 and 5 all of this here we go over to create and then we check for pattern let's see circular pattern so if we count the number of times that we have this on our drawing we have it eight times so we click on our center point to be this point and change this to eight so i say okay all right so with this we could say finish sketch and we have something that looks weird like this you could go ahead to trim it out but it takes a lot of time so i just prefer to just do it this way and then lastly we go over to extrude with the extrude tool we select on what we have here and then we select on all of these small spaces which we have situated here um, please make sure to select all because it's possible you could miss one or two so ensure that at the end of your selection that we have the same number of selected parts or profiles so I select one two um, this also this 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 looks like the eyes of a weird creature looking at me <laughs> so we have all these selected and then we have 17 profiles selected with that we change our distance as we can see in our drawing to 40 so make this 40 looks like this we say okay we'll go back to this view and that's exactly what we have our holder is created and then we can save in the same folder where we have placed our previous components and this is where we we'll end with this part so i'll catch you in the next one where we create our circle hi guys this is Ola from Cardbond. Welcome to the next part of our project series. And this is going to be our um, fourth part to be created, which is a simple circle that looks like this. I just call it a ring, but in the PDF file, it's called a circle. All right, so without further much blabbings to make, we jump right into it. Alright guys, so for this we begin by, let's see, very simple, <laughs> we start and we click on the top plane this time around, we simply draw two circles, concentric circles at different diameters, so we could start with the 849 outer diameter, um, zoom in a little, repeat my circle and then the 749 inner diameter with this very simple thing done we're almost done and then if we take a look at detail b um, we see that the thickness of this is five millimeters so we finish sketch um, we come over here simply extrude and select on this profile when we come here we impute our five millimeters let's see how this looks all right and we say okay so still on detail b we notice that we have um, fillets at the edges of the circle so um what we do is we go over to fillet and then we select on this edge and select also on this edge so make sure you're selecting this edge and if you rotate you notice I'm selecting this top edge also so when those two are selected we impute our radius here which is 5 and say ok so with this um, that's pretty much it <laughs> um, just inspect um, the sectional analysis to ensure that ok what we have is what we should have so if you look at the front view um, 
notice that what we have here is just as what we have in our drawing there's a curve here there's a curve here and we have our hatches all right so i wouldn't say okay so i'll just say cancel and then we can save this part that's the end and we meet again in the next video hi guys this is Ola from Cardbond and you're welcome again to this series um, for this project and in this video we're going to be creating the part called the front cover as seen on our PDF file all right all right all right in this we're going to use a couple of construction lines but to begin let's say we go over to our sketch and then we use this plane just to make it easier for us all right so with this what we do is we first start by creating the circle um, as seen on section a section aa so what we're trying to do at this point in time is to utilize the sectional view to create this part and we notice that we have something there as um, radius 78 so um, what we begin to do is 78 multiplied by 2 which is the diameter of that part then we notice also that the thickness of this still on detail or section AA notice that the thickness on the right corner the right hand side of the drawing shows 3 so um, it's going to be three millimeters in thickness. So what we do is we create another circle. The previous radius was 78. So we say 78 minus three is um, 75. So we say 75 multiplied by three. And, oh, sorry, no. 75 multiplied by two. So we have this 150, yep. All right, all right, all right. At this point, we would pick up on our line and we would create a line that goes this way it doesn't have a distance yet um okay wait a minute i guess it has a distance already yeah so if we look at the drawing the top view just above section aa we have the overall diameter 212 so we make this line to be 212 in size and what we do is we create a construction line for this from this center point we go up and apply symmetry between this point this point and this line and so we have something like this so it's positioned to be symmetrical to this line and then if we look at the section view again we have a distance between this line and the bottom part of this um, circle here so for that we create another construction line at the base just this way and enter make this construction line tangential to this we keep this construction line to be horizontal and then we apply a dimension between this line and this so the dimension between these two is 33 so we insert 33 but if you notice that um, this dimension is for the top uh, is for one surface of this line so we will create an offset of this by three millimeters coming downwards let's see select um, three let's see what that is yep remove the construction type and say okay so we have something like this this is 33 and 3 is coming downwards at this point um, what we do is to close this line up one and then two yeah all right so on the right hand corner also we have a radius so what we do is we create a circle and the circle will make it somewhere in between here and give it the the radius is two so the diameter should be four okay yeah so the diameter of this is four and what we do is we place a tangential constraint between these two 
and between this and this so this is what we have it exceeds the three all right so with that we just create circles so we create a circle here and please bear in mind that now i'm creating this um, circle at the same um, side as this one here um, because we're not going to need the other part of this to be honest i don't know why i stress myself in covering it up so you create a circle at the other side of this point where you created the initial uh, circle so we create a circle here and looking at the drawing the section aa on the left hand side we have the radius the outer radius to be 22 so this is going to be 44 right and we create another um, concentric to this and so it's going to be 22 plus 3 that's 25 and this is going to be 50. do you understand what i just did i hope so <laughs> all right so we place concentric constraint so that both circles have the same center so it's already there nothing to worry about and then next we place um dimension so the distance between the center point the center line and this line as seen on section aa is 71 so we apply 71 to this and then we apply tangent so the tangent is going to be simple we could either select this line this circle and make it tangential to this or we could select this circle here and make it tangential to this so i'll just pick on this and this so you notice what we have that it is tangential in this manner and then let's see 71 okay so since it's that way i guess what i'll do is to um i'm going to say that the drawing has a little bit of fault yeah and that's because um this tangent is supposed to also be tangential to this right but since it is not so what we're going to do is we're going to delete this 71 millimeter and then create another tangent so which is this circle should be tangential to this which makes it this way um if we check the dimension now again so we have let's see what it is so it is 74 so this is what it should be but um nothing to worry about so we just close we create a line not construction and draw a line coming downwards this way voila so that's what we have for our sketch you could delete some things and all of that but it's preferable to leave it this way so finish this sketch we come over to the home view what do we do we go over to revolve with the revolve we're going to go back to our right view and make sure we select the same sketches <laughs> so we select this or the same profile sorry we select this we zoom in to select this we select this we select this and we select this and lastly this so this is what we want to have selected there are seven profiles in total as you can see so once we've selected all of this correctly we click on axis and we select on this line as our axis of revolution so it's going to revolve um 360 degrees and then we say okay d'accord the next thing to do is to place our circles or our holes as we can see on the top view so go back to sketch i'm going to create my holes using this plane um because the holes are going through so it doesn't really matter so i use it or create it using this plane and first of all i'll create a circle construction line from the center point and the diameter is going to be 87 times 2 as you can see on the top view um, we have the distance between the center line and the top circle is 87 so i'm just drawing a circle honestly it's not necessary but i'll just draw a circle this way and say enter next i'll create my um, circle again and this time i switch up the construction zoom here and draw a circle to be 
on that line the diameter of this circle is 6.5 if you look at the top view we have a part on the bottom left corner that says 6.5 cyp so what cyp means is typical and that means that all the circles are the same so this is 6.5 in diameter um, let's see yeah so 6.5 we move this way and what we need to do you notice it's still in blue so we place horizontal and vertical constraint i select on this circle switch up the bodies select on this center circle and then i select on this point here also so now you notice that it is uh, black which means it is fully defined and based on this constraint chosen it is directly on top of this point here okay with that done we go over to create circular pattern we select on our circle center point pick on this so there are eight of these so we change the quantity to eight say okay so we have this um finish sketch and then lastly we go over to extrude we select each of these profiles all eight of them and eight then we create an extrusion cut that goes this way all right so if we take a look at this this is what we have we have something like this and that's how our front cover is created pretty simple and you can save your parts if you have questions no hesitate to place them in the comment section and i'll catch you guys in the next video and you're welcome again to this series in the project the ship wheel um this is going to be our, our component six in this series of project and in this video we are going to be going through the next part which is the back cover the back cover is pretty simple as we see on the screen and so let's jump right into this All right, as usual, we begin by creating a new sketch. For this, I'll place the new sketch to be on this plane. And we are going to create a circle. For this circle, the diameter is 212, as we can see on the drawing to the left side of the page. So, say 212. And um, I guess that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah um then we create a new circle here i'll just say the diameter of this is 6.5 remember like i always say as much as possible try to create everything within your sketch and then so that you have few features here so we have the distance between the center of this and then the center of this circle to be 87 and then it's still blue so we'll make it completely vertical so I select on this center point and this center point. Now it's fully defined. The next step for us to take is going to be to create a pattern of the circle. Since we have it there that the dimension of the circle it says 6.5 millimeters and it writes typical, which means that the circle is the same all through. All right. So to select my object, select on this. I click my center point and pick on this point here we notice um, from this page that we have eight instances of this circle so we change the quantity here to eight and say okay um, having done this we can now finish our sketch go over to extrude and when we go over to the side view of this sketch as seen we see that the thickness of this is three millimeters so we insert three and then we say okay all right however we have one more thing to do which is detail a 
it tells us that the radius is 2 so what we do is we go to fillet we rotate we pick just one point one of these edges and we insert two millimeters enter so this is what we have and it looks um, it is very simple to be honest so to inspect we go over here section analysis check this view and we will take a look at this bottom side here we have the two millimeters fillet here all right with that done we are finished or we are through with this particular part you can go ahead to save yours as a back cover and i will see you in the next video where we create our pin Hi guys, this is Ola from Cad Pond, and thank you all for being here um, so far with this series in this project. For this, we're going to be creating our pin, and it is pretty simple. So why not we just jump right into it? All right, all right, all right. So what we have here on the page ten. And our PDF, which we downloaded at the beginning, is a pin which says D10 times 80, um, which means diameter 10 by 80 millimeters um, pin. So I guess it's a standard pin, but I don't know why it's um, placed as a separate um, part here. Um, however, there's nothing to worry about. All we need to do is go to the front plane. Or any of the planes there are several ways to do this you could just create a circle extrude and create a chamfer but like i usually say um then in that case we have three features here so um my weird behavior is that i always try to have um, as little as possible features that i could imagine so i'll begin by creating a rectangle this way and I'm going to use the revolve tool for this. The length of the rectangle is going to be 80 and press tab. Since it says the diameter is 10, so I'll use 5. So what I'm doing right now is that, um, let's say, I am creating a profile that would be revolved um it might look like obviously we are using um more um processes to do this yeah for this we are using more processes but then when we have our feature tree we just have one and two which means that if we are to load it into like a project or assembly um, workspace it doesn't have to load the whole list of processes that's one of the advantages of having few features here so um i'll get this construction line i select on the symmetry constraint so i'll pick this and this and then select on this line it's not completely necessary to do it this way but i like to do it this way and then i would also make this coincident which means um, it makes the sketch fully defined um, but before i finish i'll go to chamfer and then equal distance you will notice um, in the drawing we have um, something where it writes 1 multiplied by 4.5 so um, what we're going to do is I'll se select equal distance chamfer or distance and angle chamfer it doesn't really matter since it's 45 degrees so equal distance could work so I would select on this corner and the distance should be one say enter then i repeat the same process for the back side of this so modify chamfer this and then i'll just do that here and also make this one and say enter all right so this is um no, this should be 45 not whatever that is and this should be 45 I'm sorry, I guess I forgot to change it. Anyway, so those are 45 um, degrees and 1. 
45 degrees and 1 and we are done with our sketch finish sketch what we have is this we go over to the home view we go to revolve and then we have the profile selected now we select our axis and we have this okay so you've noticed we have just two features here which simplifies the design process for us and so you can go ahead to save yours and i would save mine and we should meet again in the next video where we create um a rivet for our assembly process hi guys this is ola from cardpond in this video we are going to be creating a rivet for this series um, to be used later in the assembly process of our ship wheel so guys if you take a look at our pdf file on page 11 of 18 um, we see that we have two standard parts there which is the rivet and then the nail so i would be um, creating the rivet right now however i would like to show you something which is very important to know um so if you see written down there it is written standard part which means it exists in reality and then it can be accessed in any country at any point in time so for that reason the creators of fusion 360 and other 3d um, modeling softwares have kind of imputed the standard parts in the database or that i should call it database or resource file folder of the software um but in this case we are not going to be using that but i'll show you what it is so if we go over to insert we notice we have different things that can be inserted into our workspace so for here we try to check on insert mac master car component we notice that we have a list of components here all sorts of components right um but what we need to do is or what we need is actually the rivet so in this case i could select on rivet and taking a look at our drawing we have um, dimensions and stuff so i would select metric system of measurement um the diameter of the rivet um, shaft itself is six millimeters so but here it's limited at five so we could just select on five and then we have the overall length which on our drawing is shown as 46 however um the rivet works in a different way than what is shown explicitly in the drawing which means it has a process which changes after a while so here i would not say 56 46 or 45 so we need it to be more because um, when you're using the rivet it squishes at the point so um, it bends and changes um, reduces in size so um but for what we have here we see that it is shown that this particular rivet can be used for materials of thickness 36 to 42 millimeters um but for our use i've seen that okay what we need is the distance of 46 as shown in the drawing hence we will change this from 50 to something bigger okay so with 55 millimeters we have well within the range of 41 to 47 millimeters so i could select on this and then we have river types and then we could select all sorts of other specifications that we need now the thing with this is um, it gives us the um, should I say the dimensions for the standard parts and you could also order standard parts here um, to your workshop or wherever or you could click here and since we are using fusion we could, we could go over to 3d step file and say download so when we do that it downloads the step file of that rivet into our workspace which looks like this so um when we use the rivet it's um uses uh what do i call it should i, call, should I simply call it pressure something like that so this pin pushes and then the other part of the rivet is squished or something <laughs> yeah 
but this is not gonna work for what we need to do hence I used that process so let me just remove this part I used that um, delete book group and its contents I used that process to come over here and um, obtain the um, particular dimensions for this rivet type and so I'm going to be showing or using that to create the model of what we need enough of the explanation weird stuff I know so we begin by going to our create sketch as usual I select on this plane I click on my construction line and I draw something that goes upwards this way so what I'll do is I would create a circle um, using our dimensions um, so I'll just create a circle this way not construction line this time around with the diameter of 10.5 and then I would create a line that cuts it somewhere right then draw a rectangle that starts from here into it okay so with this what we'll do next is I'm going to make sure to just model half of this rivet so what I mean is um, I would create a construction line also below here in this manner and say okay next I would place dimensions so the dimension between this point and this point should be 46 divided by 2 which is 23 all right all right all right <laughs> which means that this is also going to be the same so um what i'll do also is to create a construction line because we need to have a defined length for this dome here the top part of the rivet so create a construction line this way check and say it is tangential to this line but i'll keep it to be horizontal all right the next thing i will do is to place a distance between this line and this line so this is going to be two millimeters all right then i will place a collinear constraint between this line and this line to make them on the same line hence we have this lastly we have the diameter of this um, section to be um, was it again six so this would be three three millimeters and to round this all up let's see let's see let's see <laughs> 10.5 millimeters looks very small for what as compared to the drawing <laughs> but we do not care so lastly i'll just pick this line and take it upward this way the normal line and not the construction line all right guys the next thing for us to do will be to mirror what we have on top to the bottom mirror this line the circle and um, the rectangle let's see how we can mirror the rectangle this line and say mirror line to be sorry i have to select on this mirror line to be this line and say okay all right with this finish sketch go over to revolve and we select on our profiles one two three four five and six I go to axis and select on this and here we have our rivet now we say okay and we have something like this it looks really small this top part so we could change it and say um sketch edit sketch sorry <laughs> not this sketch i don't know when i created that so we say edit sketch and instead of 10.5 let's just make it some somewhat larger let's say 15 um or 16 finish sketch and this is what we have this is better than the previous 
and so we have our rivet made and we can save this part for you you could also increase the diameter of the circle in sketch 2 to make it larger and look far more um, similar to what we have in the drawing to something probably 26 that's still okay um, let's make it let's reduce it a little bit yeah so finish sketch and we have the voila as our rivet and then we can save this and i'll see you in the next one where we mod our nail using the same procedure hi guys this is ola from cardboard and this is the last in the series for our component model for our ship wheel <laughs> And in this, we're going to be modeling a nail using um, the same procedure that we used in the previous video for our rivet. So I already have the nail dimensions with me, so I do not need to go ahead to demonstrate what I did in the previous video. For this standard part of our nail, we begin by creating our sketch on this plane. And for this, we start by creating, I would say, just random um, shapes that look as much as close as possible to what we try to achieve at the end. So we know that a nail looks like this by all means. Um, something like this and goes this way, and also the. All right. So when we have this kind of a shape. The next thing for us to do would be to place dimensions and probably constraints also. So I begin by placing the first dimension which is the length of the nail um, part that is uh, from here to here should be 20. <laughs> should be 20 millimeters. Yeah. So and then the diameter of the nail is 2. So we would make this 1 one millimeter next um, let's see let's see the dome or yeah the top part of the nail has a diameter of 4.76225 so um, 4.76225 do it this way all right so what we do next is i'm going to drag this circle downwards drag this point also and just bring them closer to this point here something like this all right the next thing for us to do would be i would place a coincident constraint between this and this point and then we have the height of the dome to be two millimeters so I'll say this to this point we we'll make it um should we make it two one looks good enough um let's see what two looks like ah this is crazy <laughs> so um let's just make this um 1.5 millimeters in height there all right next i will just drag this closer so that um, everything looks compact and nice and then lastly we would create um, an angle an angle here so we say this should probably be something like um, okay 45 degrees is fine all right so we have this we finish our sketch we go over to revolve and then we select our profiles one and two axis and this is our axis with this we have our nail we say okay and then it is completed all right so this would be the end of our modeling for the components to be used in the assembly process and with all of this our next step is going to be to create our assemblies all right go ahead you can save your files and then i'll catch you up in the next video
Hi guys, this is Ola from Catbond. If you are here, means that you have completed all of the components uh, models that we have done in the past for this uh, ship wheel series. Um, the assembly of this um, project is going to be easy and I will take it um, step by step, dividing this into several parts. And at the end of this, this is what we are going to have as shown on our screen. So let's jump right in. To begin, we come over to show data panel. Within our project, I'm going to create a new folder and call it um, assembly. All right, and I would open this. Okay, cancel. Now to begin an assembly using Fusion 360, there is something that you have to do, which is you have to have saved your current file. So right now we have untitled. So we we'll save this first and I will just call this one because I don't want to be thinking about the name. So we can just say one and make sure that you're saving in the correct directory. You could save in the ship wheel directory, it doesn't matter, but make it saved where you can find it and say save. All right, so the first thing for us to do now is we go over to show data panel and for this I'll go back to ship wheel and I would insert my handle. I'll right click and say insert into current design. So we have the handle inserted here. I do not need to change the direction or position of this. So I will simply say OK. And I would also go ahead to insert my pin and say insert into current design. All right. So with these two, I can say, OK, the pin is located here. The location doesn't really matter right now. And I close the data panel. OK, the next thing for us to do is going to be to place um, assembly constraints or joints between the pin and the handle. So one thing you need to know in Fusion is that the first part that you select um, in creating your joints is going to be the one that moves its position. So um, what we do is we go to assemble joint and then I'll click on or rotate my screen. What I want is to find this center point here of this um, the cylindrical surface for our pin. So when I select on this, right? I also need to select the center point for the hole located here. So now the hole I mean is if we go to inspect and section analysis using this face. The hole I'm trying to select now for the handle is going to be this hole here. And the position is going to be at the center point of this hole. So if I say OK, um, which is not necessary to use this method. I go over to joint. So I'll just repeat what I did previously. I select on this center point of this um, surface, right? Then I come over here. I select on this surface and select the center point. So now what we're doing is we're applying the constraint between the center point of the pin and the center point of this handle. Also, we do not want the, um, we could leave it as rigid, but I would say we, we make it um, cylindrical because that is what it is in reality. So we we'll call it cylindrical means it's allowed to move um, up and down. And I would say, okay, now we have this, I go to my analysis where I created this section from, I can switch this off. And this is what we have. What we want to do now is to make them fixed together. So I go over to assemble and say rigid group, which means that when we proceed in the assembly process, wherever um, this part goes to, this also follows. So I would say select the components one and two. Yeah, we already have uh, a cylindrical constraint, so we want it to be included. Yes. And I would say, OK, now this is done. The next thing for us to do will be to save this part and I'll catch you in the next one.
hi guys so this is Ola from Catpond and here we are with the second in the series for assembly work within the ship wheel project in this video we are going to take a different approach as opposed to what we have in the PDF so we are going to simply create um, a very very easy assembly so at the end of this we'll have something that looks just like this as seen on your screen I said in the previous video that in order to create an assembly we have to initially save our current file so I go over to save and navigate to my assembly folder and call this 2 um, I explained previously that we don't want to be thinking about the name so yeah so that's what we're still doing I'll say save and then I go over to our data panel navigate into our assembly and I right click on the assembly one and say insert into current design so we have these two together as one single component and I'll say ok I will go back to the ship wheel and insert what we have as a holder I'll right click and say insert into current design and then we have it this way um, for this particular one we could rotate it um, 90 degrees this way and just leave it that way so I would cancel the data panel and begin to apply our constraints like I said previously that um, the first part that you select is the one that moves to join the second so what we're going to be doing is since um, this part here is let's see let me look at this clearly origin point on the front view is not so much as located at the center hence we're going to be moving this part instead so what we do to begin is I'll click on joint to move this part to align with this I would rotate to the side we have this groove here and select the center of this groove here now I want that center to be aligned to the center of this part here and we have something like this all right all right all right with this I would say okay so since we have this and we are going to have this handle with its pin um, all around we could insert this individually however it's going to take a long time so what we're going to do is we just go over to create and click on pattern circular pattern for this particular one we are going to have to create our pattern um, using the center of this part so um, I would say first of all you need to do something we we'll go over to construct and we want axis true cylinder cone or torus select on this and select on one of these curved faces here and say ok so now we have a temporary axis created at the center of this part hence we can now create a pattern and come over here circular pattern and then what we do is we go over to type we want components we want the component assembly one and our axis of um, revolution or pattern is going to be the temporary axis we just created this we have three by default we change that to the number of instances that we need which is eight and we say okay all right so now we have something that looks like this on our screen it looks a little bit weird but this is what we need so for me I would say um, let's change something this is a front view right so I would change this to set current view as top view so um, if you look at it from this way and here then I'll set this as the home view um, set current view as home if it's this view alright so at the end of the day we have something that looks this way and so we can go ahead to save and I'll see you in the next part
Welcome to the third in the series of our assembly workflow um, for our massive project, <laughs> the ship wheel. In this um, particular video, we are going to be inserting a new part and at the end of the day, we are going to have something that looks like this. Um, like I said in the previous, we followed a different approach this time. But at the end of this video, we should have what we have on the page 15. So um, let's jump into this. All right, all right, all right. Now that we're here, the first thing as usual would be to save. And for this, under our assembly directory, I would call this three and say, save now um, what we do is we go back to our data panel and under assembly we select on two to say insert into current design and with this we have this on our screen all right so okay um i would like it to be rotated actually so i'll just put mine this way 90 degrees rotation all right then we we'll go back to ship wheel and insert our arc so insert into current design i'll bring it in once and i could leave it this way and say okay cancel and then following that we would place our constraint so we go over to joint I select or scan in revolve to the inner circle here and select on the center of this circle which is the inner face for the arc as you can see it here then I want that to be um, joined with let's see let's just use this particular one here you could select anyone actually so I want it to be um, joined with the center of this circle also. So when we do that, it's going to be a cylindrical constraint. We notice that the direction is not what we want. So we rotate this this way by 90 degrees and say enter. All right, so now we have something that looks like this. So what we have now is that there's a constraint between just these two but we do not have constraints between this part and then this. So to solve that, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to create constraint between both of them. However, since this is already in its proper position, what we'll do is we go to assemble and say as built joint. So um, we do not need to select like the way we did previously, which all we need to do is to click on the two different components that should be um, that the constraint should be between. So I select on this, select first component and select the second component. So as built joint and we could make it um, cylindrical and say um, snap, the snap point. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll shut this down for a bit and place the snap point to be here. All right, now we bring this back. What we have is this, and I'll say, okay. All right, now there is a um, constraint between these two. So now rather than bringing multiple elements of this arc and applying the constraints repeatedly, what we do is what we did previously. We go to create, and then we say pattern, circular pattern, we click on the component which is this and the axis the axis we created for the previous video so we select on this part now we have all of this going around it's also it and we say okay all right all right all right and then at the end of this what we would like to do is to place rigid combinations between all of this so that when one part moves the rest of it follows through so we go over to assemble and say rigid group to do this we select the components um, one two three 
four, five, six. So we just actually select all of them to make them a rigid um, group um, this way with this yes so now all of these are rigid together and then if one moves the rest of them move also so we we'll go ahead to save this and we we'll meet again in the next video hi guys this is ola from cardbond and um, you're welcome again to this um, ship wheel series using fusion 360 and in this particular video we're going to proceed with our assembly process and for this we are going to be inserting new components and placing them in our previous saved file all right so at the end of this this is what we're going to have as seen on our screen and let's just jump right into this all right as opposed to our previous videos where we began with a new file and now to insert all components in so for this one we are just going to continue from the previous which in this case is our saved part number three so what we would be doing here is just simply bring in the new components that are required and placing them or creating the assembly here you could however use the previous method um, but you are simply just going to increase the number of files that you have so um, for this we go over to our front cover it's just one we insert into current design and it is placed here we notice that it's um, upside down so I would just rotate it 180 degrees this way um, say 180 and then we also bring in our back cover um, insert into current design and this um, we do not need to well I think we need to rotate so I'll rotate it in this direction um, 90 degrees right and lastly we'll be bringing in one of our rivets right click and insert into current design so for the rivet we have this is just a single part we could move it separately place it somewhere else say okay and i close the data panel and what we have on our screen is all of this to proceed with our work what we do is to begin placing our joints we start with the front cover i would rotate downwards and select the center of this um, face to make a cylindrical constraint so if i select one of these cylindrical edges it snaps to that point for me now i would rotate to the top view and select also the center of this face now we have a cylindrical constraint placed between these two however you notice that um, this is within our file so they are intersecting each other so i'll just move this upward a little bit and say okay and then the next thing for us to do place a new constraint um, so let's say joint so we'll place constraint between some of these circles because right now it's just the center that is constrained which means it's, this part can still rotate so what we do here is i would place a constraint between the base part of one of these holes so let's say the hole here i select on the edge and you notice that the center point is what is snapped i rotate to the top view and select the top edge of the hole here so um now it's going to sit just on that hole with two constraints selected this the main center and this which means that this no longer can rotate all right so with that done we proceed to apply the same kind of constraints with the base joint which is the back cover we select using this um, center the center face and rotating our view to the base we also select on the face here 
so we have a constraint that looks like this i will draw this downwards a little bit um, so i can place other constraints properly now i would apply the same um, type of constraints i placed previously so i would select on the base hole for the back cover which is this so what i have is that center hole for that back cover selected and i'll also click on the edge of this handle here so that those two are fixed together in the cylindrical constraint form all right i say okay and we have this good back to the home view lastly we have our rivets for our rivets i'll select on joint i want the rivet to be the one that moves so i would select on this top cylindrical feature here right and navigate to any one of the holes on the top view so i select on this also so it's going to be joined together in this manner now if per adventure you notice that probably your what's it called your joints are moving or it's placed wrongly something like this then all you need to do is scroll down here and then you click on flip components so till it looks like what you want all right so with this i would say okay and since we do not need to repeat or bring in multiple of the rivet ones so all we need to do is to go over to create pattern our component an object to select is our rivet and our axis still utilizing the axis we created previously and eight instances we say okay all right so now that we have this what we're going to do is we're going to place um as built joints or let's just say we place um rigid group so i would say one and i'll select all of our rivets include this yes and include our bottom face i don't need to include all of the handles anymore because um the handles are already connected to the uh what's it called this part all right so i'll say okay and we have that done for us now this is what we have and we can go ahead to save our file and we meet again in the next video where we insert our circle and also try to apply our nails all right guys see you in the next one hi guys this is ola from card bond and you are welcome to the last in the series assembly series for our ship wheel project so i'll quickly say thank you for sticking around till the very end and hopefully you enjoyed all that you have seen so far and at the end of the day we are going to have something that looks just like this all right so let's get into this all right all right all right so in this particular video i would say that we are going to be modifying one of the parts that we have um and i would say also that the only reason why we're doing this is because um, we would like to kind of simplify what um how do i put it just to simplify the process it could be done in another way um, but in my case the particular part or component i'm talking about is the one called the circle which was created in page seven um so the reason why we want to modify this is because if you take a look at the page 3 of 18 detail c we have holes there that help us to know where our nails are going to be imputed as shown in page 2 of 18. so it's going to be all nailing this um circle part to the other components that we have assembled together so to do this um we could simply insert our nails and just position them but i think positioning them that way might be a little bit stressful 
so what i would like to do is to modify this using the detail c on page 3 to add the holes to this component all right so for us to do that we know that what we did initially was just to create a sketch and then we extruded it upwards so to modify this we just go back to sketch instead of creating something new and um, let's say cutting holes into it so we just go back to sketch and say edit sketch we pick circle and i'll draw a small circle around here we would make the diameter of this circle to be drawn to be the same diameter of our hole or sorry of our nail which is two so we say two millimeters for diameter of the hole and i'll draw another circle here and say this is also two millimeters in diameter the next thing to do would be to position this properly so previously we didn't create the construction line so i'll do that right now at the center of this going upwards this way and we place our dimensions dimension between this and this hole as seen on page three detail c um let's see so it's supposed to be 10 with reference to the handle but since the handle thickness is 40 um all right so it's 20 on one side 20 the other way so it's good this is going to be 10 also <laughs> i'm sorry for my for explaining it this way but hopefully the things that i show on the screen can make you understand it better so this is also going to be 10 in distance horizontal distance um next we would say the distance between this and this now we take note that using detail c it says that the distance between the top um, surface or top circle and the center of this hole is 13 hence what we're going to do is we would say distance here to here is going to be let's see what's the overall radius of this 849 so 849 divided by 2 minus 13 i'm sorry <laughs> so put a bracket 849 divided by 2 minus 13 and say enter all right and we also repeat the same for the bottom which is this and this center and for this would say um let's see so the diameter of the other one is 749 so we say bracket 749 divided by 2 bracket close 13 all right so in essence this is what we have created i'll try to um, make it clearer for us to see and as you can see in this um, description i have made here now and to explain to us how i came across this or uh, came about these dimensions here so we have simple arithmetic here with all that our next step is going to be to pattern these circles all around so we go over to create circular pattern and we would select on one and two holding control or just selecting and then our center point would be this point all right the number of instances that we have is um let's see 96 divided by 2 equals 48 divided by 2 equals 24. so we have it um pattern 24 times <laughs> which is a lot um but we keep that in mind so what we do is we change this to 24. With that we say okay and we finish our sketch um so what we do is we go back to this extrusion 
and say edit feature take note that we haven't um, created extra features yet so all we need to do is we cancel this profile and select on this single profile without selecting the circles there now we notice that we have our hole so i'll just say okay and then we have the holes automatically inserted here we go ahead to save our file as a new version version 3 and then we can open our assembly file and bring in our last saved file we open that afresh i can see this um, remove the circle version 3 so we go back to the data panel ship wheel and i insert our circle and say insert into current design with this inserted into our current design i can cancel and say okay um i guess i'll bring in our nail also so we'll bring in two nails insert into current design um it is located somewhere here so i'll just move it outwards so we can see it later i bring in another nail um insert into current design and also move this a little bit so we can see it later and i'll say okay so what we're going to do i cancel this and place constraints between this circle with our part here assembly joint and i would select on the bottom um, face term, which is this circle i select on the circle so it selects the center of the circle as we can see and i would select um, one of these edges here on the top face of this arc so when we do that it applies the cylindrical constraints to both um, however, if your cylindrical constraint is not um, selected um, here, then you can change it. And if the position is um, wrong, then you can always go over here to flip it over. So this is what we want and I'll say OK. Um, with that done, the next thing for us to do is simply to place our constraint between the circle and our nails. So begin by selecting joint. I'll select also um, this part. I want the center of that circular feature there to be constrained to one of these. So let's say this hole here in this manner. Hole here. All right. So since it's a nail, and then the other bodies within are um, wooden, so we do not need to create holes there. I'll apply and repeat the same for this second one joint i want the center of this to be aligned to the center of this hole here using a cylindrical constraint all right so with these two we would like to repeat what we just did to the base part of our work so what we're going to do is that we we'll simply um let's say take this backward a little bit on the tree before the pattern so that um, when we create a mirror we don't have to select all of the components one by one so what we we'll do is we will create a mirror it should be under create mirror um, we want to uh, mirror components so I would say the objects to mirror we want this we want the nails the two nails and our mirror plane taking a look at our front view is going to be this top plane here so with that selected we are mirroring uh, what we have on top to the bottom also as we can see so I'll say ok and then we have um, the nails at the base um, together with the um, circle so now that we've mirrored this we can go ahead to move our tree in front of the pattern all right so what we have here is that um, this c pattern has only um, created 
the pattern for the nails on top so just um, repeat that we could edit this um, but sometimes it takes a long while um, so what I'll just do is just to create a new pattern I guess or rather let me delete this pattern and create a new one afresh pattern circular pattern and so I'll just select all of those nails the four nails which is both nails on top and both nails below so this is the nails below and these here are the nails above so with this our axis just like we did previously and I select on this it's a 24 instances and okay the 24 instance so this is what we have now if you notice we are done we could um, switch off our joints so that they do not bombard um, our screen um, let's see I guess the joints are still open in other places so we still have the joints um, for this part I guess visible anyway so um, we have this leave that alone so what we have now is our ship wheel to finish I'll just show you something if you go over to inspect and say interference we notice that um, let's say the only interference that we should have should be between the nails and um, these bodies let's say something like this so I'll just select a few of them and when I say compute then we notice that we have interferences here in this point here all right all right all right so with all of this done we are concluded with our model and we can save our parts so i hope that you've enjoyed this so far um if you have or had any challenges in the process of this please do not hesitate to place it in the comment section um i usually i like to um reply so please do and um when you're done you can also upload to your instagram and tag me on it so i could see what you've done um, and this is my instagram and do set hola um it's like a french um <laughs> handle name all right guys thank you so much for sticking around to the end if you're yet to subscribe to this channel um yes i guess you should do so because um i have some other interesting things coming up soon if you enjoyed this project so far um you can go ahead to share this with your friends who are also trying to learn um fusion 360 and uh, share as wild as possible <laughs> as wild as you can and as wide as you can now i'll catch you guys in the next one